Hi everyone. So I thought it was about time that I did a channel update. I haven't done one for quite a while and um, I needed to, there's a couple of things I think I needed to address because we haven't had quite had the, the videos coming out that I, I wanted to get out. Um, and um, I've been to Salute and uh, I've just completed some other bits and bobs. So I thought channel update, best way to do it. So first of all, I've got to apologize because we ha I haven't managed to get <laughs> the number of battle reports out. Um, that I thought that they'd be able to do. Um, obviously started the Wars of the Roses campaign and really enjoyed doing the first battle and showing all the campaign movements for the campaign system I'm writing. Um, and we're all set to do the next um, the next phase um, of, of that. And basically everything just went crazy uh, with work for both myself and my opponent. And what happened was every time that I was free, he was busy. Every time he was free, I was busy. Um, we then got into the busy part of, um, of the school term, so stuff with the kids um, and life will just, just always has to take priority. Hopefully we'll get the, uh, the next game um, as part of the campaign going again soon. However, I have got some other games of Wars of the Roses against some other opponents lined up as well. So that's going to be happening very, very soon. Um, same basically with uh, the Samurai game with um, that we were doing with Haley as part of the campaign. Everything's set to go, but um, Haley's work is just incredibly busy, and obviously just being being a mum and uh, me being a dad, just things. Just I don't want to make the videos if we're really really tired, you know. So hopefully we'll we'll get some out soon. There are some battles I've got battle reports um, that I need to edit for Dead Man's Hand, um, and there is a Black Powder one which I've been holding on to for a while, which I just haven't had time to edit yet. Um, but as soon as I get some time, I will I will put those out. Um, so thank you everyone who, who's asking about the, the campaign system for the Wars of the Roses and when it's going to be, if I'm going to put it out as an alpha or beta or whatever, but the alpha at this stage. Um, it, it will be, it will come out and um, I'm, if people want to sort of receive them and, and give me some feedback on those, um, that'd be great before I go to sort of like another draft and another draft and another draft and another draft. Um, I'm basically at the stage where I'm just writing um, scenarios, scenario lists, and um, then it would be pretty much ready to go for people to go and, and give it a try. So maybe, maybe in the new, early in the new year, we'll be looking at it as soon as I get some time to sit down and um, really write it. So may, maybe at Christmas, maybe I'll get some time there. So um, it's on its way, um, but I'll probably do a video update as well once I get to that point. Um, the other thing that I, I need, to, need to address, I didn't actually think I'd have to have to do this, um, is of course, hang on, I've got this in here in War Games Illustrated, is this, this, the Waterloo campaign, the, the new release from, from War of Games, the Epic Battles um, system, it's Black Powder, but the, the, their releases. Um, I've received no less than 30 messages or and, and, and e individual emails asking what my thoughts are on it and if I'm going to be buying it and if it's going to be shown on the channel. Now the, the quick answer to that is basically no I'm not. I'm not going to be getting into it yet um, and I'll, I'll come on to that in a second. Um, the thing is, I I started getting Napoleonics in 2015 when I won the um, La Haison Collector's set from Warlord Games. And in in the six years that have gone past, I have built what I consider to be two massive 28mm armies um, for the British and the Allies and um, for the French. And I can field eight brigades aside um, in those. And in the battle reports that I'm putting on the channel, I think the most you've ever seen is probably four brigades and now I can, and I can do double that per side and no that's plenty big enough for me the main thing is as well I, I don't really have a desire to repaint everything I've already already painted at a smaller scale I'd rather get things I haven't painted yet I'd rather either collect other eras or um, look at other armies now this is where it comes into that I might get into it if they do the Prussians, and I understand they are going to do them early next year um, in one second or third wave, then that's something that I would look at. So then I can I can play some games against some people who've got the French um, and we could do things like Ligny or Placano 
that that would be brilliant um, I think that the release is is good um, I think it's a good idea initially um, I wasn't wasn't sold I'm, 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 I'll admit that back when we talked about it on the podcast um, but looking at what they've done with it I, I think it's really only going to be a good thing for for the era and getting people getting people into it um, I there are there's already lots and lots of ranges that are out there but this is you know a complete box of a tsunami basically in a box what, what, what more do you need it's plastic for people who who want that who don't want metal models those people do exist <laughs> and um, it's um, I think it's only a good thing and if, if you can get more people into into that period then you know then more people might come to 28 millimeter or it doesn't even matter if they don't you know at the end of the day it's um, it's a game but um, I won't be doing it anytime soon I will wait until um, the Prussians have to have a release and then I'll pick some up and I'll see what they're like and if it is then a project I want to want to go through I don't know if I'd want to drop 90 quid on a Prussian army and then find out that I, I just don't like painting it um, that's kind of what happened with the 28 mil um, coincidentally there's gonna be some Prussians that I've painted going on on uh, on sale soon um, but um, I, th th that's it really. Um, I, I hope that answers the question. So the general thing is no, I'm still going to be doing 28 millimeter battle reports using black powder. This is like, as you've seen, playing against Haley and Ken and anyone else who wants to play them. And um, you know, eventually maybe there'll be an epic game if I can get a Prussian army together or if, so, or if, or if I get invited to a game and, um, and I take part in a battle report and someone has done both armies. Um, two channels that you should check out if you do want to um, see some epic stuff is uh, Stuart from Miniature Realms and I'll leave a link down here. He's, um, he's doing it, he's gone into it in a big way and um, Ken uh, from Miniature Wargaming Warriors who you've seen some of the, the battle reports, um, he has a burning desire to repaint everything he's already painted. Um, at a smaller scale because <laughs> he loves it um, so go go check out their channels they'll keep you up to date with uh, releases impressions rumors all of that kind of stuff um, and there is a, a Facebook group as well that you can join um, so that's uh, my sort of statement I guess on on the epic battle stuff but uh, now I'm just gonna get in I want to show you um, some of the things that I've worked on recently that I've that are just a highlights for me and uh, and I'm going to show you the uh, the haul of stuff I've got from Salute. Okay so um, I thought I'd just pick out a few things I've worked on recently um, that I haven't done individual videos on. Um, you've probably seen these if you watch the Plastic Crack podcast um, when we do our weekly updates but I thought I would just pop a couple of these uh, on here now. Um, and this is probably the weirdest thing <laughs> that I've done. Um, and this is all uh, Stee from On Point HQ. This is all his fault. Now, if you head over to Stee's channel, and there's a link below, you'll find that he's really into this thing called Turnip 28. Now, I'm not going to go into what the law of this place is, but a quick rundown is think medieval models with Napoleonic firearms with root vegetables growing out of them um that's that's basically it and it, the way i look at it is steve told me about all of this stuff and i see it as a great way to use up all the sprues and napoleonics and wars of the roses stuff that i've got kicking around i have a lot of spare pieces i have a l massive bits box um and i could do it with some more and you can see this is quite heavy so the turntable stopped so what I have done, now I'll, Steve will probably correct me, I think this is called a unit of fodder, but basically what I have done, because we ended up with some sprues left over from Crackcom, um, I had these are, and this is probably sacrilege, these are the new bodies of the Prussians from Perry Miniatures, the plastic Prussians. The arms uh, with the muskets are from the elite companies of the newer French infantry set from Perry's, um, the early French one. And then these heads are all mostly from the Frostgrave Cultist Sprue um, with some weapons added in here. And I mean, I don't know quite what I was doing. I think the whole idea is it's meant to be, I think like World War One mud with Napoleonic firearms with medieval armor and things like that. Um, and you just come up with your armies and you, you and it, it's, it seems quite lighthearted, but very grim as well, like quite grim dark. Um, you know, I know that that term gets used a lot with, you know, because of 40k. But yeah, there's definitely a feel here. 
So anyway, I was just putting some things together and then I started sticking random things together and this is what I've come up with. So there we are. I, I have come up with a, a name for this, which is the Drekubris Brigade, which basically means the Muddy Pumpkins. Um, and um, it was one of my friends who said, am I going to paint them so they look like carrots um, on the top? So yes, yes, they did. Um, so just done them on a Sabbath base. Um, which I had left over because uh, I bought them in twos and then so yeah mounted on on 25 mil washers and put them together and I just had a lot of fun so I, I don't know if this is something I'm going to game regularly or um, if this is something that I'll probably only play when I see Steve but it's something to work on and do in the background while um, working on other projects and my turntable has Yep, the battery's run out. Oh, wait, no, there's a bit of life in it yet. Nothing but professionalism here. Um, so anyway, there's those. I'll, uh, I'll pick out some of the other things. Okay, so um, I've obviously been working on lots of stuff to do with the Wars of the Roses. You guys see the videos, you see the updates. Um, but I hadn't actually done a video on this. Um, again, it went up as part of the, uh, the PCP. But this is a Rebuilder Quinn, or basically a volley gun, an organ gun. Um, now we know that Warwick had these at the Second Battle of St Albans, and um, I think it's fair to assume that they probably were used in other battles. Now, the model of the Rebuilder Quinn is made by Redoubt, um, so I ordered it from them. You just get that. Now they do make uh, a crew, but I decided to kit bash my crew and just see what I could come up with, because I lo like Warwick was fond of his um, black powder weaponry. So I've already done the bombard. I've done a cannon for him. I've just bought another cannon for him, and I thought this would be quite cool in the gun line. So um, basically, what I did was this guy at the back, who's sort of the commander, if you like, sort of commanding the, the crew, uh, he's just made out of the mercenary frame and the, uh, the men at arms frame. He was good fun. However, these two, those are normal uh, Bill and Bow bodies. Uh, but the arms are from the American Civil War cannon set. That, that, that bucket is for. Uh, American Civil War bucket. Now I don't know how they were made, so I just tried to make it look wooden, and uh, did some tried to do a little bit of sort of slatted woodwork on it, and then you got the guy in there holding the taper. So those arms are meant to be on ACW figures, but I felt that they went they went on there quite well. So there we are. So there's a rebuilder Quinn. So if you're looking for one, if you're looking, you could just use it as a normal cannon. You could just give it normal cannon rules and just have it so it's looking differently. I've come up with some rules. Um, speaking of which, I've obviously um, I have the adapted rules for the Wars of the Roses that we use for Hail Caesar, and I get lots and lots of questions about how we would get hold of it. Um, it's basically if you I can email it if if you want, um, so just drop me an email down below. I know people have emailed in the past, and I've probably said I'll send it to you. If I've not, just email me. Uh, just email me down below, and I'll send it. Um, if you're a, if you go on the Plastic Crap Podcast Facebook group and join that, it's in the download section on there. Um, and it's going to be something I, I update. And it's, if you want to use it, use it. If it, Or if you want to use it for ideas, that's all I did, was I just took the one um, that Rick Priestley had done for use in the Perry's campaign and I adapted it for my my method. So you might not, you might find that you want to adapt this. So whatever, just just use it. It's a resource that's, um, that's there um, if you want to have a go. Um, so that's probably one of the things I'm... Sort of most excited about from the wars of the roses other than something else but i'm doing a completely separate video on that um however next we have another artillery piece now i thought this was going to be the last artillery piece for my english civil war project however after painting all of this and then saying that i then found a light cannon kicking around which i've, I've got to now build as well but this is the last one from the um the sort of gun battery set that you get from Warlord and this is a culverin and like the other ones it comes with a sort of molded resin base which has got these the gunpowder dug in in the ground here it's also got these nicely molded um, crates and barrels and I, I love it it was it's a brilliant set absolutely fantastic set this one a little bit harder to put together because you have to balance this chap here who's sighting the gun which meant that I couldn't leave the cannon loose 
I mean, I could have glued him to the gun, but it wouldn't have been very stable. Um, so I've had to, so the cannon is actually fixed, whereas on my other um, artillery stands, it, it's not. So you can capture them or, or blow them up. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Now, I'm going to talk about Napoleonics for a second, because I do not understand why war because this is a brilliant set i think it's about 45 quid but you get free cannons you get the scenic bases it's all metal you get some additional command figures as well which oh hang on just here so you get the guy in the blast armor and then this sort of overseer chap i added the um uh the what it's called already gabion there we go um but you get quite a lot in there. You get three, you know, decent sized cannons, the bases, and you get the uh, sort of the dugouts at the front. So you can, you know, pop that on the fortifications. I don't understand why they don't do one for Napoleonics. It would it would be brilliant. You could just buy a battery and they could do all this, all this stuff. I think they would be fantastic, but uh, they don't. So that's, that's a gripe that I have. And I think I've voiced it before, but um, I was really, really pleased with this set. So there he is, sighting in the, the cannon. He actually has got one, one eye closed. And there's a guy rolling the gunpowder. You've got to be careful about how you do these because, of course, they've got integral bases on them. And some of them are a bit are slightly flimsy. So you can't quite just pin them onto this here. So you have to sort of be a bit um, funny about where you're popping things on the base. I like this guy. He's taking a drink. A water skin. I can't focus. There we go, he's having a, having a drink. So, that is another cannon for the ECW. So, those are just some things that I've picked out that I've, that I've worked on. Um, I've done loads more, and there'll probably be individual videos coming in, but just a bit of a hobby update there. Um, and now, I guess we'll, uh, we'll have a quick chat about Salute. Okay, so... Let's talk about where I went on Saturday, which was Salute 2020, happening in 2021. Um, I was lucky enough to receive a press pass from Mac from South London Warlords, who put on Salute. He was a guest on the Plastic Crack podcast a few months ago, and he very kindly sent some press passes out to me and the, the other guys, Dom, Ken and Stee. Um, only me and Dom could actually make it, um, but... It, it was brilliant so it was great to to get into the hall early and go around and chat to the traders um, and the people who were setting up the games before like, all the masses of people came in and do some videoing and um, and obviously just you know see things for, from a slightly different angle um, I, I had a brilliant time uh, the hall was was bigger you know they taken on extra area and when we spoke to Mac um, that was at, at a cost, but you know, to be COVID compliant and to make sure that everyone was safe, they, they took it on. And, and personally, I, I enjoyed it being in a, in a bigger hall. I, I, I liked it. There was there was plenty of space to, to walk around and to stop. You weren't on top of each other. Um, now, because of that, it was quite hard to work out if it was busier than normal or if it was less busy. We spoke to Mac in the afternoon and I think he said it was just slightly under what they would normally be expecting. But to be fair, that that was, you know, way better than than you know they, they'd worried about because the question was would, would people come along there were some um sort of notable um people missing um from the traders um some some fairly large companies who, who hadn't hadn't turned up but other companies had sent a presence but i actually found that that meant that some of the smaller traders and the more independent games companies would there was a lot there was a lot of people around their stands and salute you know it's always very busy but there's some main the main stands are always really busy and some of the other games some of the smaller uh creators and um mini manufacturers sometimes i feel kind of get overlooked but that wasn't the case this time um i know we talked to a couple and you know they all said you know no it's great spending was going well and I, I didn't really see any stands that weren't particularly busy you know, one of the things that was missing was there didn't seem to be as many participation games or just games in general now i understand when when we spoke to people that was actually just because some people just didn't turn up you know there was no didn't know they weren't going to turn up they just didn't turn up but the some of the tables that were there absolutely fantastic um the the one that was in the center and i believe it was um where it had o group rules next to it and um i think it was a it was, was it the vulgar um attack from the vulgar I, i've forgotten the name of it but obviously you can see it here 
That was fantastic. And one of the great things was I got to um, bring along my mate Kev um, and met up with uh, Dom while I was there and met up with Graham from Graham's Wargaming Vault. Got to see um, VK, met up with Andy and Tom and Matt Mail and just, just loads of um, loads of people um, that we, you know, that, that comment on the videos or who make videos or who are part of the Plastic Crack podcast Um Facebook group so that was really good being able to meet up with people um, I went around lots and lots of traders and I didn't spend as much as I thought I would but I still spent a bit so here is the obligatory I've been to a show here's my um, my hoard of stuff so um, I'll get rid of that um, so what did I get so um, one of the key things I bought now hopefully this stuff will come out I've just got a big bag of stuff. Here we are. So buy corn were there. Um, now one of the main things I've noticed is I don't have that many commanders for my ECW. Now this project was meant to be ending, but um, there's a couple of notable exceptions I haven't got, and that was commanders. And as they were there, I thought I would pick them up. So I picked up uh, Lord Ralph Hopton. So obviously I've done his regiments. So I thought I'd get Hopton, and uh, you all know how much I love the buy corn figures. Um, and then I thought, oh, I can't really not have the man who's kind of kicked everything off. So I have Charles, uh, it comes with Edward Walker, and the Prince of Wales. And you, so you've got the Prince of Wales in here somewhere as a, uh, there he is, as a sort of boy. So that's, um, that's awesome. So buy core miniatures, I'll be doing those very, very soon. Um, brushes, I always just grab brushes. I'm not going to bother getting these out. But these were just sort of five, five quid for free. There we go, it's more paint brushes as I seem to be getting right through them at the minute. Um, Gripping Beast, Arab like cavalry and horse archers um, for the Crusade project. Um, the, all the stuff I've got at the moment is going to make a small game so I figured um, that one of the units that the, um, the Arabs should certainly have is some light cavalry and horse archers so I've picked those up. What next have we got in the bag? Ah oh, yes, um, Iron Gate Scenery. We um, we wandered over here um, just before the, the doors opened and this is 3D printed stuff. Um, I'll leave a link to the shop down below. Now Dom went straight for a trebuchet but I was thinking about the uh, the Crusades and um, I wasn't convinced that you know the trebuchet was quite the right weapon that time period so I just went with a good old-fashioned catapult um, and it's all pre-assembled and pre-done a nice pile of rocks I've just got to work out where I need to tie this then paint it so I'm very very pleased with that I think that will look quite cool when scaled in with some of these and I think I can make a nice crew for it with um, with the Norman, the Vitrix Normans, so um, I need now I need to find a base big enough to, to put that on. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, oh, that one's going to be something which I'll put in one go. Um, the Salute Miniature is this um, Guide to Plane from the Battle of Britain. Now I can't remember if it's from the film The Battle of Britain or if that's from Empire of the Sun where someone goes along with the plane, but I, I'm pretty sure it's. I don't even know if it's meant to be based on that, but. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Now, I've actually got two of these somehow. I wound up with two, so if anyone wants one, let me know. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, um, these Gringo 40s are there, and I've been looking at these for a while online and went outside, had a beer, and then went back in, and then Dom basically sat on my shoulder going, yeah, buy it, buy it. And these are the Marmalukes from the Imperial Guard. For Waterloo, and these are fabulous, fabulous miniatures. Um, now I'm only going to do a small unit of them. Um, well, I don't know. I'll start with a small unit. So I bought six of these. I just wanted to do something Napoleonic with really fancy, different uniforms. The light's not going to be great in here. Let's get let's, let's get them out. And this guy. So we've got a cavalry guy here with an axe. Napoleonic cavalryman with an axe. So. very nice lots of character and I wanted to just do something a little bit different um, there's plenty of um, 
of Napoleonic cavalry that I hate painting, but these I just really, really want to do. Um, so we have another one there that's just a sabre. Um, who's this one? This is another one with a sabre. Standard bearer in this one. And then here is the uh, probably the most complicated one, and the one that's probably most intimidating to paint. This is the musician, which is a drummer. So look at the decoration on that. You know, I know plastic stuff is wicked, but there's just still details that you will get in metal miniatures that you just cannot get in plastic. Um, well, there's the drums. And then here is the musician. It's going to look wicked. I can't wait to use them. Rules-wise, I, I don't actually know. I don't know if I just use them as light cavalry, I guess. Um, I don't really care. They're going to be on the battlefield. And Do you know what? These are probably going to end up taking longer in time to paint than they'll ever actually spend on the battlefield because I have a feeling they will be shot off of the battlefield very, very quickly. <laughs> um, so, no, very pleased with them. So I've got, I've got six of those to make a, a small, small unit. More Iron Gate scenery. Uh, this is for my Dead Man's Hand stuff. Um, these are playing tables. So you've got, you've got some kind of, I don't know what that's meant to be. Is that backgammon or something? I don't know, but you've got a poker table there. So you've got the cards and the coins pre-molded onto the table. They're just gonna go in my buildings for Dead Man's Hand. Speaking of which, um, I went over and saw the guys at Great Escape Games. Had a really good chat with Stuart. Um, so I've got myself some casualties. Um, I will need these. I need these a lot in my games. Um, and I've also got myself uh, Roy Magnum. <laughs> or uh, rather Tom Selleck by any other name. Special character um, to be used. It was great. Managed to, um, along with Dom, convince uh, Graham from Graham's War Games Vault to, uh, to go and get a gang. And while we're there, I know Dom bought another gang. Um, I, I can't remember if Kev bought any any more bits and bobs, but oh no, he, he did. But he's got stuff from Tombstone, um, so it was great because it managed to just sort of like visit lots of different stalls. Um, I needed another cannon. What can I say? I like cannons. Warwick likes cannons. I needed another cannon, and the Perry Metals were there, so why why not? Oh, that's the other one of those. And uh, the last couple of bits is something which is just a bit of a, a test for me. Um, now, I've wanted to look at another project um, or just something very, very different. I've got my Normans, my Crusades, and I'm very conscious about not taking on too much, but I still like to challenge myself and do some varied painting. Now, it's been a while since I've painted anything at 15 millimeter. So I thought, why not? I'll buy a bag of 15 mil minis. I'll do them up and see if I enjoy it. Um, and then we'll just see where that goes. So this is no hard, nothing hard and fast. So I decided to go for, for Blue Moon and these are 15 millimeter, let's get them out. 15 mil Landschnecks. I must need my head testing for this. But amazing detail. Awesome, awesome little figures. Everyone seems to be going on a small scale, and I thought after uh, speaking to Simon Miller, and I know the Renaissance rules are coming up for to the strongest. That maybe a maybe doing a small Landschnecht or Swiss Army. Anyway, just just something to play around with. I just want to paint them up. Um, this is thirty in that bag there. Um, I'm gonna source myself some pikes from the nearest broom. Um, but while I was there, there was someone was selling flag dudes um, stuff. So I got myself a couple of Landschneck flags to go with them. And then as I was at the Blots um, stand, I saw this nice little 15mm medieval shop. So at the very least, these will have a photo taken in front of this. It might never get used again. These things might end up on eBay straight away. But um, I, you know, we, we shall see. We shall see. Um, other than that, it was just great wandering around and, and just seeing everything. So I had a fantastic, fantastic time. Um, it was great to, to everyone who came up and said hi, um, said they enjoyed the channel. Thank you very much. To the person who asked, <laughs> asked me to a selfie, um, 
thank you. I'm pretty sure I'm gurning in it, um, so I hope I didn't <laughs> ruin it, but thank you. Um, it was just great to see everyone. So if you come over and to everyone else who went there, you know, I just hope you had a, a good time. It was just nice to see everybody. Um, and just, you know, I think the, the traders who'd obviously, you know, they've probably been hurting it over a, for a little while. It was probably good to see that there are still some people out there that want to, want to get the product. Um, I'm going to be going to Warfare in a couple of weeks time and um, so hopefully maybe get some more stuff to do with some games um, but really that was it for Salute so overall in, as far as I'm concerned I didn't go nuts I've been informed that apparently this is this is still you know not restrained but um, after seeing the piles of shame that some people have bought and uh, definitely that um, have been post up already I feel pretty good so yeah that was uh, that's the Salute Horde and um, I just don't know what I'm going to start painting next. So uh, we shall see. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll leave you with uh, a little bit more and uh, we'll move on with the update. So everyone, thank you for watching the update. I know it's been quite a long one, but I wanted to comprehensively talk about the channel and what's going on and also show the other things as well. So uh, yeah. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys all again soon in the next one. Stay safe. Cheers.